My name is Philip Travis. I'm an Associate Professor of History here at the State College of Florida. My specialization is in U.S. relations in the Cold War, and I'm the author of the book Reagan's War on Terrorism in Nicaragua. I did my Ph.D. at Washington State University, and today we're going to talk about the Vietnam War. The roots of the Vietnam War rest in European imperialism. The French colonized Vietnam in the late 1800s, and this colonialism led to the rise of a fervent Vietnamese nationalism led by communists, Vietnamese communists like Ho Chi Minh, or Pham Van Dong, or their general Vo Nguyen Giap. During the Second World War, the French were defeated, and this opened the door to the Vietnamese led by Ho Chi Minh to declare the independence of Vietnam, which they did at the end of the war. However, at the end of the war, the French sought to recolonize Vietnam, and the recolonization of Vietnam, or the attempt to do so, led to a brutal war known as the French-Indochina War that lasted from 1946 until 1954. During the French-Indochina War, the United States backed the French, first because in the 1940s they desired a strong France in Europe against communism in Europe and ultimately in the 1940s because of a concern that there was a global spread of communism particularly in Asia with the fall of China to communism and also the Korean War. Eventually Vietnam became the centerpiece of what was known as the domino theory and the containment policy and American policymakers were obsessed with preventing a spread of communism in Vietnam. The American war in Vietnam in the 1960s and 70s was highly controversial and often widely protested. The primary reasons for this are due to perception, the perception of American policy in Vietnam. Vietnam is sometimes called the television war and this is because it occurred during a time of a revolution in broadcast journalism. Americans owned televisions and they watched TV, the six o'clock news, often as they ate dinner, and they received pretty intense battlefield reports on these news reports. Television journalism showed the American people what American policy looked like in Vietnam. And they saw images of villages being burned down. They saw images of napalm, a highly destructive weapon, being used and affecting civilians. They even read reports of massacres like the My Lai Massacre. And so this gave Americans a perception that American policy in Vietnam was inhumane. Likewise, the Vietnam War was largely based on the draft. A good number of Americans who served in Vietnam were drafted to fight there. They were asked to go fight in the war whether they agreed with it or not. And that tended to also prey on poorer individuals in the population. And so burning your draft card became a symbol of opposition to the war in Vietnam. The end of the war in Vietnam for the United States was really a gradual process. And what caused it more than anything else was really a loss of will on the part of the United States. The United States had escalated in Vietnam from several thousand advisors in the early 60s to 500,000 ground troops by 1968 and 69. They had dumped a tremendous amount of money into the conflict and had suffered quite significant casualties, but with no potential victory in sight. The real turning point for Vietnam was the so-called Tet Offensive of 1968 in which the communists of North Vietnam and their Viet Cong ally in the South launched a major countrywide offensive. This shocked Americans because Americans had been told by their leaders that the war was about ready to end. With the Tet Offensive, the United States in Congress made a decision that the United States should begin backing out of Vietnam. And the United States, under the leadership first of Lyndon Johnson and then Richard Nixon, began withdrawing American troops and turning the war over to the Vietnamese army, eventually formally exiting with the Paris Accords of 1973. And of course, the Vietnam War officially ended for those in South Vietnam with the collapse of Saigon during the Ho Chi Minh Offensive of 1975. The lessons of the Vietnam War 
are that the United States should use military measures as an absolute last resort. And when the United States does decide to intervene militarily, that it should do so only when it fully understands the nature of the conflict, of the people in the place. During the Vietnam War, we see a case where the entire war was based on this broad understanding of the domino theory. In a lot of ways, the United States never really fought in Vietnam for Vietnam, but rather it fought in Vietnam to defend against the domino theory for this regional idea of containing the spread of communism. And the consequences for that were that the United States got more and more involved in a conflict that it did not understand and a conflict it did not know how to extricate it from or how to win. And the consequence of that was ultimately thousands of lost lives, um, a tremendous amount of money spent, unquestionable amount of destruction and devastation to Vietnam, and an ultimate prolonging of war that probably could have been ended with far less destruction had the United States given greater consideration to the nature of the people and the place and the conflict beforehand and considered the usage of the military as a last resort.